Let's talk memory cards. If you're a Sony a7R5 owner, or will be purchasing one, and you're thinking about what types of memory cards you'll want to buy, there are a number of factors you'll want to consider. Because yes, it is entirely possible that you may spend more on a card that you don't need, or that you might not spend enough on a card that you do need. So without further ado, a simple guide of five things you're going to want to consider when picking up memory cards for your a7R5. Now when we're talking about memory cards, arguably the first thing we have to consider here is number one, the supported card types. So the Sony a7R5 has two card slots, both of which support CF Express Type A and UHS-2 SD cards. And ultimately, this is very similar to Sony's other top-of-the-line alpha cameras like the a7S 3 the FX3, and the A1. But there is a distinction here, because with cameras like the a7S 3 as I mentioned before, you're going to have certain resolutions, frame rates, and codecs that will not be supported unless you're shooting with CF Express Type A cards. But this is not the case for every Sony camera, because as my video on memory cards for the Sony a7 IV on my channel shows, there are newer cameras in the Sony system that allow you to use only SD cards and get the full range of capabilities of that camera. And all of that comes to point number two, which is, do you need CF Express Type A cards? And that answer is more than likely, no. With a photography-oriented camera like the a7R5, really the biggest advantage you're going to get with CF Express Type A cards is the ability for the camera to clear its buffer a bit quicker than with SD cards. But unless you're someone that's typically shooting very high frame rate bursts on the order of hundreds, if not a thousand plus photos, this is something you're really not going to notice any appreciable difference with. And in fact, for certain photo quality options like lossless uncompressed RAW, you will still be able to get close to a thousand shots before hitting the buffer on this camera. But this is even more so worth talking about on the video side, because much like the a7 IV, when it comes to CF Express Type A versus SD cards, the a7R5 supports shooting all resolutions, frame rates, and codecs using only SD cards. But this is not true necessarily of all SD cards. And if there is one differentiating factor between what different types of SD cards will support, it is the V or video speed class rating that is going to determine this. Because yes, while the a7R5 supports shooting video in HD, 4 4K and all the way up to 8K 24P, and does so across a range of Sony codecs including XAVC HS, XAVCS, and XAVC SI, and offers this in the regular movie recording mode as well as the SNQ or slow and quick mode, depending on whether the SD card that you're using is a V30, a V60, or a V90 rated card, this is going to ultimately determine which of those different resolutions, frame rates, and codecs that you can shoot in. Which speaks to point number three, which is V30 cards get you some things. Now while you will be able to film in HD and 4K using Sony's XAVCS and XAVCHS codecs with V30 cards, you will not be able to film in Sony's highest quality all intra or XAVCSI codec in HD or 4K, nor will you be able to film in 8K using the XAVCHS codec. Now as an interesting caveat to XAVCHS 8K, you technically can record in the 200 megabits bitrate option using a V30 card, but because you cannot record with the 400 megabits version of that codec with a V30 card, this particular resolution and codec option isn't officially supported by Sony for the a7R5. But perhaps the largest limitation with V30 cards will come with SNQ mode, because you will not be able to shoot in any of the different video recording modes using SNQ mode with a V30 card. But that might beg the question of what V60 cards offer over V30 cards, which is to point number four, V60 cards get you most things. Yes, much like the HD and 4K options you got in regular movie recording mode with a V30 card, you will now gain the ability to shoot 8K footage in XAVC HS using a V60 card. But perhaps an even greater advantage with V60 cards is that when it comes to SNQ mode, all of those different movie recording options you saw that were available with a V30 card, you're now going to get in SNQ mode with a V60 card. But of course, what you might still notice is that for both movie recording and SNQ mode, when it comes to the XAVCSI codec, these are still not available even using a V60 card. Which means, yes, to shoot in Sony's highest quality all intro codec, you will still need to look a card level above a V60 to achieve this. Which all brings us to point number five, which is V90 cards get you everything. Yes, every resolution, frame rate, and codec option when it comes to the movie recording mode in the a7R5, including XAVCSI, and yes, the same when it comes to the XAVCSI codec using SNQ mode. With V90 cards, you effectively unlock the ability to use the full range of video capabilities with this camera. Now, I believe there is one small caveat in that on the XAVCSI 4K SNQ mode side, if you choose a very particular frame rate and recording frame rate combination, you may still need a CF Express Type A card, but this is such a minute corner case in the grand scheme of things that if we're utilizing, say, a 99 to 1 rule, V90 SD cards really get you just about everything you need. Which, yes, V90 SD cards are what I use on my Sony Alpha cameras, and that might beg the question of what SD cards I would recommend. So I use and have been using the pro-grade V90 UHS-2 SD cards in my Sony a7S III, my a7 IV, and now my a7R5 for the better part of two years or so. I now have six of these cards and have shot countless professional gigs using them, and in fact, just about any piece of content that you can find on this YouTube channel. And in the time that I've had these cards, 
I have had zero, yes, zero issues with them. Need I say more? To me, when it comes to SD cards, I think Prograde has struck the perfect balance between affordability and quality, and so I highly, highly recommend these. That said, if you're someone that thinks a V60 SD card or even a CF Express Type A card is worthy of considering, they offer both of these models as well, and I will leave links in the description below to all of these. But one of the things that no one seems to talk about is card size, and in a camera that shoots as high resolution stills and 8K video like the a7R5, this is going to have some interesting implications. So for one more thing, let's talk about memory card size considerations for the a7R5. So for reference, each of my Prograde V90 SD cards are 256 gigs. Now when it comes to shooting raw stills with this camera, using uncompressed raw, I can get a little bit less than 1850 photos on that 256 gig card. Yet at the other end of the spectrum, shooting small, lossless, compressed photos, I can get a little bit less than 6500 photos with that same card. And if you're someone that shoots compressed raw, this falls in at around 3,400 photos, or roughly in the middle between these two values. And again, in a camera like the a7R5 where you have a 61 megapixel sensor, this is really a case where that is going to impact card size. Because if we were to compare those numbers to a camera like my Sony a7 IV, which utilizes a 33 megapixel sensor, that is a camera where I can get roughly 3,300 uncompressed RAW photos, going all the way up to just shy of 10,000 small lossless compressed RAW photos, with lossy compressed RAW photos again coming in and around the middle at around 6,100. So yes, I would highly consider how many shots you typically take on a particular outing or gig and weigh that against what card size you think you'll need and how often you want to be changing memory cards. But when it comes to video and card size, while the megapixel count isn't going to be a factor here, both the resolution and even more so the codec is going to play a pivotal role in how long you can record for. So if you're someone that typically shoots in 4K 24 frames per second like I do, you're going to be able to yield around 2 hours and 17 minutes in the highest quality XAVC SI codec. Now using Sony's tried and true middle of the road XAVC SI codec will get you around 5 hours and 18 minutes of record time, but if you're someone that prefers the smaller file sizes and more compressed nature of the XAVC HS codec, this can get you as much as 10 hours and 4 minutes in 4K24. Now if we take that same comparison and apply to 4K 60 frames per second, this is a case where with the XAVC SI codec you will get around 55 minutes of record time. However, go to the XAVC S codec and you will get 2 hours and 39 minutes, and going to XAVC HS you will get 5 hours and 2 minutes. And yes, for those that want to shoot 8K 24 frames per second in this camera, while you can only do that with the XAVC HS codec, this will get you around 2 hours and 43 minutes using the same 256 gig card size. Now again, depending on what card size you're looking at, you can take these numbers I've outlined here and say roughly half them if you're looking at a 128 gig card, or perhaps double them if you want to look at a 512 gig card. At the end of the day, the choice is really yours, but because this camera shoots 61 megapixel resolution stills and up to 8K video, I really do think you would not want to go any smaller than a 64 gig card. And frankly, whether you intend to use the a7R5 for photo and or video, I really do think the 128 or the 256 gig card size are what will be your best bet for this camera. So that is my take on a simple memory card guide for the Sony a7R5. Hopefully this video has been of some help to you. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if it has. A lot more content to come on the a7R5 on this channel, so definitely be on the lookout for that. For now, that is all I have to say, so thanks for watching. <laughs>